Eric Granado, the Brazilian, the most successful Moto E rider thus far in its short history. 11 victories to his name, seven pole positions, eight now with this one as well. Can he add also another fastest race lap as well? He is the fastest in history of Moto E, but the fight back is on, he sits just sixth in the championship standings. What can he do to here today? Taking you through it, myself, Matt Dunn, Neil Morris alongside me in the commentary box. We have Brown Wild down on the grid, ready to catch up with some of the riders, and we can head down there straight away, because in the background of this shot you're seeing on your screen, has got the number 34, Kevin Manfredi, starting from fourth on the grid. He is down there with Fran. He is. So last time we had rain, we saw you were very fast. You already had a great qualifying in different conditions yesterday. What do you expect from this first race and how were the conditions coming round to the grid? On this first race is important. Don't pressure and don't risk a lot. And nothing is new for uh, for all rider because it's the new track for Moto E and uh, yesterday is dry, today is wet, but nothing. We wait lap by lap. And how do you find Silverstone? You have maybe a little bit less experience than others. You like the track? Yeah, you're right. In Silverstone 10 years ago, with I, line, but, uh, I remember the track and the high line. Well, best of luck. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah, thank you very much, Fran and Kevin Manfredi. The flying moustache, we call him. And of course, he runs to number 34, named Kevin after a certain Kevin Schott as well. Uh, Neil Morrison, hello. Welcome back to the commentary box. Not that you've really left it here today. Uh, what do you make of Moto E in the wet here this afternoon? It is going to be interesting, man. As uh, we saw Magello a few months ago, this is pretty much the first time these guys will attack the wet conditions at this particular track. So uh, not really much time to get up to speed. We did see in that race, the second race of Magello, which was wet. This man, Kevin Manfredi, did excel coming home in second. His only Polo E podium to date. The winner of that particular day was the pole sitter by a chance, which is Eric Granado. So you would have to say the Brazilian starts as favourite. Yeah, absolutely so. You, you've got to say, although he's been off the ball lately, Eric Granada will be back to podium or winning ways here today. There is Kevin Zanoni on your screens there. He places fifth on the grid, just next to his teammate, Kevin Manfredi. Pretty good qualifying from him earlier on. We're yet to see the very best of Kevin Zanoni. He sits down eighth in the championship standings. Equal points with Nicholas Spinelli in seventh and Alessandro Zaccone in ninth. 60 points to his name and a best result of fourth right at the start of the season. Yeah, this Moto E race was supposed to be held over six laps. It was supposed to start as well at 12.15. We have a two minute delay. It will start at 12.17 and it will be held over just five laps. So one lap less than was initially scheduled. All action then in Moto E. There he is, the Crumminator, Randy Crumminaka, the new Swiss king of Moto E then. He is in fourth position in the championship standings. Equal points to his teammate Hector Garzo in third. 98 points apiece. He will be gunning for a podium or victory here in either of this afternoon's races to try and claw back down the gap towards the front in the championship. There's a safety car heading out on track for its first sighting lap. And of course, no warm-up lap in Moto E, is there? No, absolutely not. These guys have just had a night lap to basically understand what the conditions are like. And uh, that is pretty much the height of their wet weather experience here. So uh, a difficult one. This is a situation where you really do not envy these Moto E riders basically have to uh, learn as they go along, man. Yeah, exactly that. Uh, I posted a, uh, a small Q&A session with some of the e VIP members earlier on. We had Randy Krimanaka up there and also Mattia Cassaday. And I did want to express these people, some of them that were there, they're not uh, uh, as corporate guests, they're not perhaps as experienced in motorcycle racing as others. But you have to understand, within, by the end of this race, these riders will be pushing their motorcycles to the absolute limits. Even though they've not ridden here before on these bikes, they've not ridden in these conditions before on these bikes, that is how good riders are at this level. There is Ferrari, Neil. What happened to him yesterday? Dramatic session for Matteo Ferrari. He crashed under a yellow flag. Jordi Torres had fallen at turn two and, uh, well, not so long later when the yellow flags were still out. Matteo Ferrari lost the front as he pitched in there. And that means that he has got a long lap penalty. This is a replay of what happened in yesterday's dramatic Q2 session. Jordi Torres called rear tyre he said was the cause of this pretty big high side coming through turn two. The Spaniard gets a big whack on his back from the rear tire as he goes into the uh, gravel trap there on the outside of farm curve. 
and it was less than a minute later this happened to Ferrari man. Yeah, he, uh, he decked it unfortunately, another cold tyre issue for him as he went a little bit slower trying to avoid somebody chasing him and stealing away a potential pole position lap time. However, you cannot crash when there are chequered flags out, you must roll off sufficiently uh, so that you do not do that and therefore he was slammed with a long lap penalty. Fred? Yeah, I was just going to say, Matt said chequered flags there. Uh, it means yellow it. flags. <laughs> yellow flags, absolutely. <laughs> Too excited, yeah. friends. So um, we've got a five-lap race then. We're just under five minutes away from getting underway. I'm delighted to say the rain has almost stopped. It's only very, very slightly spitting down here on the grid, certainly. I've basically got my hood up to protect my hair and uh, hide it from everyone rather than because it's still torrential. So that could be pretty interesting. We'll have to see how that changes, but I think Granado's got to remain the favourite for sure, given what happened in Mugello. Absolutely, friend. Thanks for the update. And good to hear that the rain has uh, almost ceased because the MotoGP qualifying session Q2 for MotoGP was really touch and go. Those conditions at the end of that session were uh, really, really tricky. We did see quite a few riders crash out. Andrea Mantovani, he'll be coming through from the front of the fourth row in 10th. We've seen some great performances from Mantovani before. He obviously crashed out in the only wet race we've had in Moto E so far this year, but he was competitive in that encounter before the crash. Mantovani coming through from the fourth row, one to the god And of course he did get a race victory back in Mugello as well in Moto E. What a sensational moment that was for his uh, career in the World Championship 2. Here is Alessandro Zaccone there on the grid uh, as we await now. Then we're going to do a final rundown of the grid before these riders go racing. Safety cars come towards the back of the grid. No warm-up lap, I remind you, so when they take off, it will be five laps held the lever in towards turn one as well. Motor we race one coming away very, very short. Time for a rundown of the grid. The riders lining up, ready for race one of two here today at the Monterey British Grand Prix. Eric Granado, number 51, starts from pole position. The number 40, Mattia Cassade, comes through from second on the grid. Hector Garzo in third. Manfredi, flying mustache from fourth, ahead of Zanoni and Randy Krumenacker in sixth. Nicholas Spinelli heads row three from seventh spot, ahead of Ferrari and Jordi Torres. Mantovani in tenth from Zaccone and Tito Rabat. Then we have the 13th, Alessio Finello, Lucas Salvadori and Mikel Pons. Hikari Kubo starts from 16th ahead of Mika Perez and Maria Pereira. Of course, there's only one rider on the grid at the moment who's got very relative recent experience of uh, riding here in the UK in these sorts of tracks. He's practically an honorary Brit in this category now, isn't he? Tito Rabat riding at uh, Donington Park World Superbikes, Snetterton British Superbikes, Brad Hatch British Superbikes, and now in Moto E. This guy basically does not like any days off, does he? There he is on your screen, there, the number 53. So British fans in the crowd, if you're watching or listening from home, give him a big cheer. He's basically one of your own now, isn't he? <laughs> he certainly is. We don't have any official British riders in the Monty World Championship this year, but Tito Rabat, the closest I think we can say to that. And just before the race starts for a minute and 30 seconds away, it's time for our pre-race predictions. But first, let's uh, go down to Fran. Who, are you, who is your money on, Fran? Oh, thank you. You've asked me first. What a true honour. Um, I think looking at Mugello and what we saw there, you've got to say Granado, but I think it's also going to be super interesting to have a look on Ferrari and Torres. Obviously, when you're at the top of the standings as they are, you want to take less risk in the wet, maybe, but they kind of have to take a little bit because they're eighth and ninth on the grid. Excellent stuff. Thank you, Fran. What about you, Neil, then? I think I'm going to go with Kevin Manfredi. He's oh. quite well, fourth on the grid, and he's uh, a bit of a wet weather specialist, so the flying moustache for me, man. What about you? I'm going to get behind uh, the, the Brazilian Eric Granado. I would love to see him back on top of the top step of the podium there, and also keep the championship even more spicy. Well then, tyre warmers are off. Tire blankets away, crews leaving the grid. Final taps, fist bumps, butt pats, whatever they like to do before they head off. And it's race time here in Moto E. Clear visors, are going to be seeing the, uh, their eyes on stalks as they come down in towards turn one. Who will be the last late breakers? Cassaday loves a late breaking manoeuvre. Who will get the whole shot? Got to be very careful. The risk versus reward equation about to come in to play. 
Red flag is up at the start of the grid. We're under starters' orders almost. The lights will go on and they'll come off and we'll be racing. Here we go. Motor We Race 1 at Silverstone for the first time ever. We wait for the lights. There they are. <laughs> just followed by Cassidy and Ferrari up there already from eight. Yeah, since it's not stopped from Matteo, Ferrari's managed to grab a whole host of positions. You can see he's getting them swallowed up there. Spinelli comes across his front as they go through turn three into turn four. It looks as though Spinelli's jumped all the way up into third position, maybe into second. He's underneath Garza as they accelerate out onto the back straight. Goodness me, where has Spinelli come from? Seventh on the grid, third row. What a first couple of corners from him. Alessio Finello, unfortunately, pushed right back down the back straight. They've got the, uh, the Wellington straight even in towards the left field. Then, last leg break. Look at the spray. I mean, goodness me, visibility. A big challenge here for the riders as they come through in towards left field. Bernardo still leading. Then we've got Garzo Spinelli looking up the inside. Is he going to take it? Yes, he does. So the Italian moves in the second. In place. A brilliant start from Spinelli, who has been uh, pretty audacious with some of his moves so far. The visibility on the back straight there was pretty scary. Those guys all did really well to get their way through Brooklyn, but Eric Granado looking pretty up front. Garzo looking again on Spinelli as they go into Cop's corner. You can see there Mikel Pons is another man who has risen up the order. Pons called by Donna 15. He is already up into seventh place. And after all the work that Ferrari did in the first turn or so, he's now been pushed back down to the start position in eighth again. And even further, he's now ninth as Torres, the championship leader, has overtaken him then. Got to remind you, Ferrari has to contest that long lap penalty for his infraction yesterday as well. We just saw a pretty uh, impressive move there from Randy Krummenacker on Cassidy as he came through the Maggots Beckett's complex. So the two Dynavolt machines are now third and fourth. Cars are also doing that just behind. Spinelli as they come down the Wellington Street. And Garza, I think, has got by it through to second place. He is proper ding dong battle coming into Stowe Corner. Spinelli up the inside again. Look how much uh, distance they claw with Bernardo back in on them. What a race we got on our hands here, Neil Morrison. Then in towards Vale, they come in for the first time. It's a long old lap here. Oh, wow, the standing water there that they've got to contend with. All the water being pushed aside by these sustainable Michelins that they've got. Ah, oh, brilliant stuff. So as they come round the final corner for the first time then, four laps to go. It's Granado leads, 51 from 29 and number four. But side by side they come in towards turn one again. Garzo up the inside. He does not want to give up a possibility of his second ever Moto E win. This is super stuff from Garzo and Spinelli going at it like Hammer and Toms in this first exchanges in the Moto E race. You can see there Matteo Ferrari now will have to serve a long lap penalty in the next couple of laps. He's currently stationed behind Jordi Torres. Eighth and ninth, that was pretty much where they started on the grid, just in the reverse order. Torres will be happy with this, keeping his principal championship contender at bay for the time being. But Eric Granado is on course to haul a big uh, load of points back on them. Riders to keep an eye on as well. Mikel Pons, the 77, up about 10 places or so. Seven he is now. Garzo making a move up the inside for the lead, potentially, but I don't think so. There he is, the fire mustache. It's Kevin uh, Manfredi, the 34 up into fifth now. I didn't see where he was on the first lap, Neil. He got pushed down quite away. Yeah, exactly. And Spinelli must have made a mistake somewhere because he was vying for second at the start of this lap. He's already been pushed back down to fifth, just ahead of his teammate, Matthias Cassidy. So Krummenacker and Manfredi, two guys to watch out for. Yeah, Krummenacker was telling me in the Q&A this morning he had some good experiences here in the wet weather conditions in Moto2 in years gone by as well. He's been taking it very sensibly over that first lap, and now he's on a charge. He's up into third place, chasing down his teammate Hector Garzo. He lies ahead of him in the championship to the Spaniard. But they are equal on points as it stands. Yeah, another position picked off for Jordi Torres, who's now passed Mikel Pons into seventh. Oh, Kromenaka up into second place. That Maggots and Beckett's complex is not a place that you nerf, especially your teammate out of the way. That's a lot of risk right there. And up the back straight, they come again, Neil. Absolutely, yeah. On the back straight, I'll get the name of this straight right the second time. Right, it looks as though Krummenacker is going to go for the lead. He is on the inside of Granado. I like this from Hector Garza right the other side. Blimey, O'Reilly, what a move that was from the Krummenacker. Rally, oh, it's a first place then. How 
awesome would it be to see him get a win in yet another World Championship. His best yet is second, but Granado not giving it up. He's into third at the moment. He's got Manfredi all over his rear wheel. The race is on. And here comes Manfredi on Granado's inside through the club complex onto the final turn. Manfredi gets up into third position and Eric Granado has been absolutely mugged on the final sector of that particular lap. But first, back on the fourth. Three laps to go, ladies and gentlemen, and this is Moto E at its very best. Riders learning the best lines, navigating the different levels of grip from corner to corner as they go, riding the bikes to their limits, and it's still just tenths of a second, hundreds even, splitting them from potential race victory. Absolutely brilliant stuff. Yeah, Krumenacker was one and a half seconds faster than Granado on that last lap. Swiss rider making a swift progress, and obviously Granado had to uh, lift up a few times as several riders were overtaking him. The Brazilian isn't careful, the two uh, pawns bikes behind are going to take over him, but look at this from Garzo now, there's been another change in the lead. Garzo takes the lead from Krumenacker going into Brooklyn's. Garzo won't mind me saying that uh, he was very fortunate with his first rate vi race victory, a win is a win, but how much would he love to take that chequered flag first as we see Ferrari there, a significant moment for the championship this, one of the longest long lap penalty lanes there has been in all of the championship, even in any Grand Prix class, he navigates it perfectly, but where does that sit him now? He's in ninth position. Oh, and Manfredi is looking underneath. underneath even further. Manacre. Yes. Goes through to second, so two places and one there from the Italian who is riding superbly. Kevin Manfredi right in the mix for a victory here. Neil's prediction may well be coming true, but there's a long way to go yet. Ferrari down into 12th place, huge for the championship lap with Torres up into seventh. But these guys out front doing their very best to claw them back in. I remind you, Garzo sits third in the standing. You know what, Cassaday and Torres aren't quite out of this just yet. I think we have a lead group of seven more or less. You can see Cassaday and Torres on the back of this group and just the bottom put themselves on onto the back of, uh, I think that is Spinelli in fifth place still. It looks still like Freddy might have a look on guards are going into Stone. A 34 shot motorcycle with a Kevin riding in almost leads the British Grand Prix here at Silverstone in 2023. Garzo though holding firm as we come into the final complex again then so we will be entering the second to last lap this time around. Garzo, no, oh, he gets overtaken by Manfredi into the final corner. That's not something you usually do, but that is an overtaking manoeuvre. We see here in Moto E. Brilliant stuff. We have yellow flags in sector four. Who is it? I think it could be Alessandro Zaccone who's gone down. It is. He's totally down the timing screen, but here it is. Garzo takes the lead once again, but for how long, Neil? Yeah, you cannot take your eyes off this. The lead is changing pretty much every corner here. Oh! Crominator into the lead again. Look at that. What a move from Randy. That is brilliant. And he holds it too into the loop. Absolutely. And Jordi Torres, the fastest man the last lap around. He's taking advantage of all this overtaking going on up ahead to make his way silently through this group. You can see he's already got past Cassidy. Torres now is maybe one to watch. And there was very close, nearly contact between Garza and Granado as they come down the Wellington Street. It's all going off here. Kromanaka has just a couple of bike legs lead over his teammate Garza. And a reminder, as we heard yesterday from Brown, this is the first electric motorsport race taking place at this circuit. And what a debut for electric racing level here at Silverstone, one of the best circuits on the calendar, stretching motorcycle abilities to their limits, and here we go through with pit once again, Ned. So, we still have yellow flags out of sector four, we can't see any overtaking manoeuvres at that final turn when we get to it, but still at this moment, we have Kremenaka out front, three tenths of a second ahead of his teammate Garza. Yeah, I think that's the biggest lead anyone has had in this race so far, Kremenaka doing well with a little bit of daylight between himself and his teammate just behind. If he can hold this coming down the back straight, then that will be a decent advantage starting the final lap. We just need Garzo and Manfredi to uh, take stock of their positions, not try to do anything too stupid because they're swapping and changing. He's giving the leader a bit of an advantage, you can see there. I'm insane, six tenths of a second, although I feel that might be slightly reduced. This is all the experience that Randy Krumenaka has in his head there. Former World Supersport champion with four wins to his name back in 2019. He knows everything.
everything it takes to not just win races in any kind of condition, but win championships as well. And this will do himself big, big favours to become potential Motor Wii World Champion in his very first year. But he's got to hold on to it. This is the final complex. No, uh, we can do overtaking now because the yellow flags are away around the final corner. We come on to the final lap. Absolutely. And Kevin Manfredi underneath Garzo into Stow to take second place. Can the Italian bridge that gap over the line? It is four tenths per second to Krummenacker. Another fastest lap for the Swiss at 2.24.933. He's in the zone. That was a brilliant lap from him, but he's got Manfredi right on his heels once again. Two minutes and 20 odd seconds left of this first Moto E race. It's been brilliant already. And Granado moves up the inside of Garza into third, but he's got the position to take it straight back, has the Spaniard. He does, but will Granado get him once again? Cut it inside with a better drive onto the Wellington straight potentially. He's looking for it. Oh, he touches his rear wheel. He goes wide. He stays on somehow. Goodness me. Eric, that's not how you get a race victory or a podium. That was as close as it gets. That was pretty scary stuff, Eric Granado. Very lucky, and you can see there that that is Spinelli taking advantage. Oh, and he's gone down. He's thrown it away. Oh, Spinelli again. When he gets up there, he just throws it away. Come on, son. You can't keep doing that. But we switch our attention back again to the front because it's 34 versus number three. It's going all the way to the wire, I hope, Neil. But Krumanaka leads. It does indeed, and now it's a two-horse race for the uh, lead and the victory of this race. You can see all that drama behind in that fight for third has given these guys just a little bit of an advantage over Granado, who goes back underneath Garzo through Stowe. Fantastic race and right the way through. Manfredi's been so good in the final sector, man. All race long, I think he can make a move under Krumanaka in the club. But Maggots and Beckett, here we go then. Then it's on to the hangar straight for one more time. Manfredi, he sniffs a first victory, but so does Krumanaka. Who will it be? Granado looks like he could well have the jump on Garzo then for that third place. Here we go. Major slipstream city down the hangar straight, the fastest point of the track nearly, in towards Stowe Corner. They pull out of the slipstream. Who will come out? Yeah, Manfredi's not close enough to make a move here into Stowe. Granado certainly is. He's going to die under. Garzo here, but we want to see just what's happening ahead. Blimey, Granado and Garzo just neck and neck into the final complex we come. We saw how good Kevin Manfredi was there. Lads, we need to see who's at front. It's Granado looking straight in towards third place. It's Krimanak has gone wide. Here we go then. Manfredi could be good here. It's the run to the line. Final corner. Who will take victory? Race one here in Motoe. It's going to be the Krimanator. Randy's done it. Race one win goes to him. Matt Brady second and Eric Granado takes third from Hector Garza. What about that for action? Moto E delivered in spades. Matteo Ferrari, championship contender, comes across the line in eight. And I think that will do considering the difficulties he had in that encounter. Not just starting from the third row, but having to take a long lap penalty. That was a damage limitation right there for the Italian. A faller in the final lap then was Luca Salvadori then, unfortunately a 23 went down, but there we go, we're seeing the celebration images of Randy Krimanaka taking that first victory in Moto E. He's already had a third place that kicked off his career in the series at Le Mans, he's had a second place and a further third back at the last round in the Netherlands, but there it is. Race one, victory to Randy. Great stuff from Randy Krumenacker. He posted the fastest lap of the race on the final lap, only for it to be bettered soon after by that man there, Kevin Manfredi. And Manfredi put absolutely everything into that final circuit. He was three tenths quicker overall on that final circuit that Randy Krumenacker just wasn't enough into that final Veal Club complex. Krumenacker did. Just enough to hold on by 0.142 seconds. First victory for the Criminator in this series. And what a hard fought victory that was. A brilliant race overall. Seven riders contesting the victory and the podium places for the majority. And it went right the way down to the wire. A uh, second podium of the year for Eric Granado then after that victory he had back in Mugello. He's had two fourth places so far this year as well. Close but no cigar, but finally he's done it. He's back on the box is Granado. A difficult season for him overall, competing in World Superbikes as well. A nasty crash back in Barcelona. Actually left him out of the first races in Moto E of the season. And here is then the final lap overtake. Incident at turn five. Ah, oh, this is where. Oh, this is where they touched. Um, 
touch wheels. Touch wheels, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So Granado underneath Garzo into turn three. Garzo responds going into the loop. And then Eric trying to get the acceleration come out there. We just missed. Obviously, Granado touched the back of uh, Garzo's rear wheel. That allowed Spinelli to get the run on Garza, but he threw it away going into Brooklyn's. And in the end, that gave the top two just enough breathing space to contest the lead by themselves. See there, Krumenacker faultless through the final double right at club. And he knew <laughs> exit in the final turn. That victory was his. Manfredi, another really brilliant performance from him in the wet to get second. And that just closes things up ever so slightly in the championship. Jordi Torres did a great job in fifth place, man. Not taking too many risks in those conditions. And crucially extended his championship lead over Ferrari in second. But the rest behind them, Krumenacker and Garzo and uh, Ronaldo, all closed in on the championship lead. Yeah, the chase is on. The chase is on. We have 175 points left available in this Moto E championship so there we have it first motor victory for randy kremenaka goes and sees his team boss jürgen lingner and his crew all there delighted with their first victory uh, second victory first victory with kremenaka second of the year of course with garzo having won back in germany too brilliant stuff from him that was as good as moto we gets i would say as we see uh, Kevin Zanoni gets uh, demoted one position from overtaking under yellow flags. And will put him, unfortunately, down at a 13th spot. There's something we like to see as well. Manfredi giving a hug to Randy Krumenacker. He had the best of him today. I really thought Manfredi was going to go for it up the inside into club, but unfortunately not. Wow got your breath back after watching that one. Yeah, that just was, about. Uh, one of the best Moto E races I think we've had this season. And amazing to think that those guys were doing those kinds of lap times, man, with no prior wet weather experience on these bikes exactly. at this Silverstone circuit. Really impressive how these guys managed to adapt to the conditions in such a short space of time. And the other thing is, and they'll go back now, they got another race later on, go back and can make some changes to the motorcycles, it'll be fairly similar conditions one would imagine by the time they go racing again after the MotoGP sprint later on so who will anybody else who was a bit further down earlier on come through to the fray Cassidy was a little bit of a disappointment you'd say sixth place across the line after starting second on the grid but what about your pole position man though no. Eric Bernardo took third place he's back in the box for his second podium so far this year after his first one was a win of course brilliant stuff from the Brazilian he's down apart firmly with Frank he is indeed. So, Eric, that was an amazing battle with Hector. At points on the track, it looked like you were riding in the dry, but you got that on the podium again. You must be happy enough with that and some good points as well with some others a little bit further down the order today. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. It's always amazing to be on the podium, especially on these conditions that are very difficult, you know. Uh, I did a great start, but in the first laps I was alone. I didn't know really well how was the grip on track, how was uh, the limit. And after they overtake me, I saw that the limit was a little bit more forward but yeah I did some changes on my riding during the race to to be competitive uh, I've lost some time with Hector uh, in the fight and the both two went a little bit but anyway uh, at least I won the fight with Hector so good to be here on the podium this podium is for my team uh, they deserve it especially Lucio and uh, Elena uh, and for their mother so it's for them this and yes uh, like like always in Portuguese uh, foi uma corrida muito boa sempre especial tá no pódio Ainda mais nessas condições muito difíceis, a pista estava muito delicada, tinha muitos pontos de aqua planning e eu larguei bem, consegui manter a liderança nas primeiras voltas, mas eu não sabia bem qual era o ritmo da pista até esse momento, até que eles me ultrapassaram eu vi que o limite estava um pouquinho mais à frente e acabei mudando um pouco a minha pilotagem durante a prova e tive essa disputa aí até o final com o Hector, então é, feliz com mais um pódio e esse pódio eu quero dedicar à minha equipe, especialmente ao Lúcio, à Helena e à mãe deles que se foi nessa última semana, então essa é para vocês, é isso aí, valeu galera, bora para a próxima. Thank you very much. Great to see him back on the podium there then after all these have been through lately. A great, well-secured uh, podium finish for him. Ahead of Hector Garza, though, who will be uh, back for more later on, of course. There was a podium position overtake. What about Kevin Manfredi, though? He almost had it, Fran. Let's hear about it. 
You did. Well, we saw an incredible move from you earlier in the race at the final corner, but then you were just too far behind Randy to make a move. But congratulations, another podium. You must be happy with that and to fight for the win. Yeah, I don't have the possibility to, to overtake Randy in the last lap, but I push him for overtaking him uh, and uh, nothing. I'm very happy. It's my second podium. Uh, when I when I see the the, the wet on the track, uh, I had a good feel, best than yesterday. And I don't start very fast, but in the first lap, I, I have the good feeling on the bike and I push him lap by lap. Congratulations. Thank you. Bye bye. Excellent stuff from Brady. Back out again later on. Will he go one better, of course? Oh, the number 34 shot seat. Uh, gets at the seat. 58 squadron course machine. Nothing but delight his team boss, Paolo Simoncelli, more than that. What a great ride that was from the flying mustache. But your winner, ladies and gentlemen. Randy Kubernacker for the first time in Moto E. He's down in Pot Ferme with Fran. He is indeed. Well, Randy, I just said to you, nerves of steel, some incredible speed as well, and you're just able to stay ahead of Kevin. Nice, clean final lap. Congratulations on your first win. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, it was uh, quite a tough race because in those five laps, uh, some of the riders really risk it so much and they passed me even going a bit slower than me so uh, i had a few really tough moments where i i was lucky to to stay on the bike but once i got the little gap and i just uh, uh, did the speed in all the corners like i i'm used to do uh, that was the important key to win this race i'm very happy to to have won that race my first uh, moto e victory uh, and it was a very important, I think it's a very important victory uh, for the championship. Uh, now uh, I, I just want to uh, send a big kiss and hug to my wife, which is uh, waiting me in the hospitality with our baby boy, because it's raining, it's cold. So I want to send a big kiss and hug to them. Well, congrats, Randy. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely love that. You uh, can take to get. Uh, right, he's going, yeah, I want to send a big kiss and love to my, my wife, mum, whatever. Not ones that are just over in hospitality and he's going to see in like five minutes. <laughs> so, great stuff from Andy Kubernak. I love that from him. Uh, well, Sterling, like he is, and great to see another winner in Moto E this year. So, Torres, Ferrari, Garzo, Krumanaka, and Granado have all been winners, along with Andrea Mantovali as well, of course. How many winners in only so half a season or so? Uh, five, four and a half rounds of racing have we had so far this year. I mean, just incredible. It's as competitive as it gets. Motorcycle racing at the very top level. And they got another race to do it all again today, later on. But between that, of course, we have uh, Moto3, Moto2 qualifying and the MotoGP Sprint. There we signs the NLX Weight Charger. Plenty down uh, at uh, the town I reside in nearby, Vista. Plenty of them near Vista Village there. I hope they send it down there. I was say, oh, there is. Six winners we've had back from nine races in this Model U World Championship, which is a pretty incredible variation. Despite the fact that uh, we have two nibs at the top, which we thought were head and shoulders above the rest, Torres and Ferrari. It's not a million miles away from that fight night. It's been a very, very impressive campaign from Rubinaco, not just because of his lack of experience, but on his off days, he has been just picking up points. Top is, 10 finishes. This is the key to success in Motorway, isn't it? Let's be honest. Um, it, it, we've seen it so many times before. Ferrari managed to get that consistency nailed in the very first edition of the World Cup, and that's how he became the overall winner. Yet, uh, with the others, uh, we've, we've seen it one in so many different ways, haven't we? And uh, could well beat the story of Randy Krumenacker as well uh, come the end of the season. So, to go in about the uh, championship standings very shortly after the podium celebrations, but it will be, you'll see, 11 points is the gap between Torres and Ferrari, but Krumenacker getting ever closer. 
So, on to the podium they will come here at the wing. Who will be taking flight out of the 31st to come on the podium will be a third placed Eric Granado eventually at some point. Come on, Eric. <laughs> oh, <it's up. laughs> Qualifying's coming along. Yeah, move on. There he is. <laughs> hey. There he is, Eric Granada then. Back on the podium, second time this year then for Brazilian. After that win, he got back to Magello. Kevin Manfredi out on the podium for his second podium of the season. And in motor we have Scott. Cicchini hands the third place trophy to Granado. No, it's not that bright, but they do have sunglasses sponsorship. So that's why he's in the end. He's in. Maybe Matt Fady's just cool, who knows? Um, the second place trophy handed to him. Sands sunglasses, as it should be with cloudy weather. Randy Krumanaka receives the first place trophy, the golden one for the first time in Moto E. Brilliant stuff, and now for once again in Motor Week, we get to hear the Swiss national anthem. is the man of the moment in the Moto E World Championship. No time for, the for him to celebrate his first win in the series. Now it's time to get busy with the fizzy. All three men on that podium have every right to feel elated after what was a really exciting Moto E race. 